Need for Speed is back, and this time it's Unbound. By Unbound, I guess they mean that the game has a mix of street racing on set paths, but also the ability to take shortcuts and even open world sections in the middle, where you don't have to take the beaten path and can blast off road through parks and across rooftops, as we've seen in the Forza Horizon games over the past few years. As we've seen in some of the previous titles, this one has a campaign to play through, so to begin with, you have to pick your character from a list of what middle-aged game developers might think are cool drivers all under the age of 30, and then dress them how you want and give them a hairstyle from a select few ones on offer. From there you can choose your ride to begin with, then you head out straight onto a street race scene where the visuals, which I'll come to in a minute, might make you tear up depending on your point of view. After a little dialogue to give some idea of your character in car, you end up at Rydell's Rides, a chop shop and garage where your father figure encourages you to take part in meetups around the city of Lakeshore in order to make more cash, where you can upgrade your car with decals, wraps and customise all kinds of things on your car that will cosmetically affect the way it looks. It all seems rather pedestrian in the story until a spanner is thrown into the works that makes it interesting when the shop is robbed and you go from riches to rags with a betrayal also hitting you clean in the face for good measure. It's then a mission to build your way back up to be the best street racer in town to win back all your previous glory and riches. So let's start with that look that's most striking. First thing you'll notice is the seamless transition from a cutscene into a nighttime racing and the city is just incredible. The road, buildings and light reflected off the slick city streets looks almost photorealistic, so Criterion have to be commended for that. Where they've also been brave is with this cell shaded art of the characters that to me doesn't sit well with the realistic world tone. And even more strange to me is the smoke, light and street art effects that float around the car as you drive and jump over obstacles. It kind of reminds me of games like Jet Set Radio at the turn of the century, which to me dates the game immediately. However, opinions being like assholes, that's just mine and I can see others loving this style. And hats off to Criterion for subverting the previous street racing games, including including their own that all look the same. As a note, you can also turn this off if you really don't like it, so not too much of a problem there. Handling is something else I have an issue with. All the cars feel the same to me and they suffer from understeer that suddenly snaps to a massive oversteer going round corners, resulting in cornering feeling clunky even when attempting a drift. There's also no difference between handbrake and brake. Tapping or holding the left trigger does both and again that feels off to me having played other races that give you the option to brake into a corner and accelerate out without accidentally doing a donut. There's also that ubiquitous noz which the characters keep referencing to loving the smell of which does feel off to a game aimed at teenagers. Believe me, a 40 year old man can't relate to any of the racers except good old Rydell and maybe except the fact he also likes the smell of gasoline. I love me the smell of gasoline. Police chases are back in this one with a risk versus reward mechanic in that you have to lose your tail after a race if there's still heat on you in order to make it back to the workshop to bank your winnings. So it's a fairly simple review for a fairly simple game. Need for Speed Unbound will likely excite teenagers, but for me, it just feels a little too pedestrian. The story is the most compelling thing in the game, but the driving doesn't really have the right feel for me, so I'm giving it a seven out of 10.